I defined ideology as such. It's a self-serving schema for the representation of us and them as social groups and reflects the fundamental social, economic, political, or cultural interests of and conflicts between us and them. And this is coming out of Oktar's work where um, I believe he looked at Turkish newspapers to identify us and them um, within news reporting sources. For coding, in terms of coding, because I am dealing with essentially kind of cold data, um, Amazon gave me kind of a heads up on that. They have a star ranking system where you can rank the book five stars if you really like it, one star if you don't. Um, and so that's where I kind of started with these, this coding, was the book ranking. So I could kind of categorize based on that. Five stars, I tended to like it, although there were custom reviews where they hated the book, but they still gave it five stars, um, like had severe issues with the book. So in order to deal with those discrepancies, I went into a content analysis. After all of the comments had been sorted based upon their star ranking, I went into the content analysis and, and looked to see what the reviews were actually saying. Were they, what was their ideological stance? Were they um, an us or a them or however that got conceptualized? What ended up happening as I'm looking at these stances were I came up with two large groups and then one kind of smaller one. So this first group I came up with was the Tolerance and or Acceptance Advocates slash deviant atheists. And this is an us or them terminology. This is when they're an us. This is when they're a them. And these are terms that came out of their own work, their own comments, their own reviews, and the comments and reviews of the opposing group. Uh, this was the much larger portion of the um, reviews, with 81% 86 total unique users who accepted kind of um, membership within this group. And their kind of big tenets of group membership, their ideological stances, were that homosexuality was natural, um, that it should be addressed in classrooms, and that children can and should be exposed to homosexual issues. These were big, larger themes that were present throughout all of the reviews. Um, in order for them to belong to this particular group, those tended to be the tenants that they had to subscribe to. Now the other group was called the uh, Protectors of Innocence slash Morals, or the Unloving Bigots, depending on which group you belong to. Uh, smaller, very small. There were 18 customer reviews that kind of claimed ownership in this group, so 17% of the total reviews were um, believed that homosexuality is an individual choice, that is a private matter, and that exposure to homosexual issues would violate children's innocence. Okay, so those were kind of the, the tenets of their belief structure and their um, membership. And then we had these two customer reviews that I call the positivist children's literature mm -hmm. critics. And these were really a large point of contention as I read through this data, and Susan read through this data, and I had been presenting on this data uh, in classes throughout the entire semester, and we kept coming back to these two customers because the hypothesis was that no one would exist in the middle of these two groups, and yet we couldn't quite, in full faith, move these two customer reviews in one camp or the other. So uh, we called them the positivist children's literature critics, and these were really commentaries devoid of homosexual content. It was a review of the, the mechanics of the book, um, as, as far as we could tell. It talked about the aesthetics, it's poorly written, the illustrations are who. Um, why, why positivist? Hmm? Why positivist? Why positivist? Because they treated the book as though that was the be-all, end-all. It was almost as though um, it was devoid of culture, you know, devoid of, of knowing these outside larger discussions, and we spent a really long time packing, unpacking that, because I kept wanting to put them in a group. I really struggled with these two particular comments, um, and, and that's when we came up with, with positivist. Everyone else in this uh, data set tended to comment on, oh, in schools, or here, or here. You might be 
bringing a lot of baggage with you by, by using the positives. You might, you might consider culture free or something mm -hmm. like that. Okay. Good points. Do we know? <laughs> All right, so those are the ideological stances that I identified after reading through these customer reviews. So, positivist, culture-free, protectors, da 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 So, moving on to the second level of analysis, which was looking at the ideological squares. And these are, the ideological squares, according to Van Dyke, are kind of the um, discourse, the moves of discourse that people use in order to um, establish their group in opposition to another group. So it tends to be these four quadrants of uh, expressions or emphasis of information that's positive about us, emphasis, expressions of information that's negative about them, um, suppressing or de-emphasizing information that's positive about them, and then suppressing and de-emphasizing information that is negative mm -hmm. about us. So it's kind of, um, it's the way in which individuals differentiate themselves from other groups. And this is kind of his model, um, which I used to look at the larger set of data. So I went through and I coded by speech act. And in this case, I defined a speech act as a sentence. That was just kind of the unit that worked. These, um, in CMC, sentences tend to be shorter, as characters, fewer words. So that seemed to be a unit of analysis that worked. Um, so after sorting them for ideological stance, which was that first level of analysis, I looked at them for ideological function. Okay, so I separated the um, the ones and the twos. I forget which group was which, but it was just a sorting mechanism. And then I went through and I looked at each speech act and coded it as um, information positive about us, which was a UT, uh, information that was positive about them, T plus, um, information that was negative about us, information that was negative about them. So I went through and looked at all of these speech acts encoded them for the function of what that language did in redefining their group membership. Okay, and what I ended up with was this kind of lovely, boxy um, presentation of the ideological square. So here we have the tolerance and or acceptance advocates slash deviant atheists, and the things that they were highlighting about themselves in relation to this text as they're talking about homosexuality and, and this book was this idea of, of truth. You know, it's a true story for goodness sake. That just kept coming back over and over and over again. In fact, in that entire body of expressions of positivity about ourselves, that showed up 64 times. So this idea of truth was mentioned 64 times. Also, this. Um, theme of family and love and this equation of family equaling love um, came up 38 times. Why not teach young children about family and love? Are you against family and love? Um, and then this idea of nature was another big theme to come out. It's refreshing to see someone showing that the love between the same-sex couples is just as natural um, was, another, was another comment. Uh, highlighting bad stuff about the other group there was misinformation. This showed up quite a bit. This was mentioned 142 times. They don't have the proper information. I can't help but think this is a joke review. Just too many stereotypical comments at once. They're not using the proper information. And that's why they're them and they're us. And then also this idea of hatred. Um, children need to be introduced to acceptance of a number of important values in a modern civilized society where prejudice is no longer acceptable. So this idea of you're using hate speech, and yeah, now that is what separates you from us. Now, um, in terms of things that they were depressing about themselves, this idea of sex, they, they totally desexualized homosexuality, which I don't know how that's possible, but they did. It's not about sex, it's about families, and this showed up 32 times over the course of this analysis. The same thing with this idea of having an agenda. There is no homosexual agenda, period. There is no agenda. We talk and then um, things that they depressed about themselves, this was really kind of tricky because there was nothing that they really didn't mention about themselves that was negative. And it wasn't until I started looking at the us or them group, depending on which side of the venture on, that I realized that they never 